I love I love myself a good like cyclical depressing oh, story. You love your cyclical. Stuff. I love my cyclical. Neuromancer, words. Wheel of Time. Yep. What else is cyclical? Um, a- your love ways. life. Uh, thanks. <laughs> Welcome, welcome everyone to the Tudor Round Podcast. My name is Richard. My name is Austin. Today we're talking about Mark Lawrence's first book of fairly new ish series, The Book That Wouldn't Burn. A part of the library trilogy. And you, does that name that you said, was that Mark Lawrence? Is that, is oh, that, that, the Mark Lawrence, that, the legendary. That son of a bitch. That <laughs> Mark is somewhere out there on the interwebs. We reached out to him. We wanted to talk to him. We wanted to have him on. And the audacity for a man to who have has another a, life to with care. children and oh. a PhD, and he's an author, and he didn't have time for us. <laughs> we understand. Yeah, completely understand. <laughs> <laughs> it was so cool because. Uh, I love when an author, we actually reached out to him way earlier about, hey, could we ever have you on? And he didn't even ignore us. He just said, hey, it doesn't seem like you guys have read most of my books. I'd love to have a deeper discussion. But, you know, I just, I want to go on with people who have more, you know, have read more of my actually stuff. Actually read my books. And I respected the hell Fair that he said, he said no. Mm-hmm. And exactly why I went, f- respect, <laughs> respect. And now we're oh, yeah. here reading one at a time. So eventually we could be like, eventually. hey, Mark, we read all your books. Come on. on. <laughs> But this this book is the first in a newer series. He has other books like Red Sister yep. and Book of the Ancestors. Book, yep. the series. This one, he, book two comes out. Um, it might be out by the time this video is out. But this mm-hmm. is book one, and I would say we're going to keep the spoiler free as always for the first ten to fifteen minutes. Then get deep into spoilers, keeping it spoiler free for people who might be curious into a book like this. Rich, would you agree with this statement that the book that wouldn't burn is basically a meta way he found out? You know what? Let me completely meta game the book industry. I will write a book about books and librarians for people that if if, if you're reading this book, of course you're going to like books. So he has a captive audience of people who are book readers reading a book about books in a library. Basically, To people who have read that, that made no sense. Make that make sense, Rich. Basically, if you're a fan of reading in general, you... Imagine this. Put yourself in this scenario that you go into a library, you go into a place surrounded by books, and you love to just sit. And that feeling of being surrounded by books makes it comfortable, makes it comfortable feeling for you. You feel warm, cozy at home. Mark Lawrence does a sufficient job of being able to put that warm, cozy feeling in literary form. Like it says. Now, it goes beyond the warm and cozy and goes to warm and toasty of, like, there's some spooky nature here. But I digress. It's still a lot of fun. Also, if you're a fan of Mark Lawrence's work, Mark Lawrence um, has an interesting range of, like, kind of the grimmest of grimdark to just regular dark-ish fantasy, dark themes fantasy with your Book of the Ancestor. This is probably his, um, I would say, his lightest fantasy book where it's not grimdark at all, far more hopeful message, maybe some darker elements and themes, but it's not a forefront in your face. So, right. Definitely approachable to a wider audience, I think. This could even be, I would say, teenage, even younger. It's PG esque. There's yeah, typical uh, action stuff, it's very accessible to pretty much every reader. That's yeah. going to be into fantasy, whereas you, that other stuff Mark Lawrence writes way, way off the deep end as far as Grimdark. Prince, Prince of Thorns is not, uh, it's not for the YA. It's yeah. new. This no, it's would not. be for a wide, wide audience. But Rich, what do you specifically think about the book? And I know you're saying generally people who are more like that theme, like that coziness. Mm-hmm. Who would you recommend this to? What do you think about it? Spoiler free. Well, of course, if you're a big fan of Mark Lawrence's other works, you will probably like this as well. Um, decent spot to jump in. I wouldn't, if you're reading Mark Lawrence's rest of his work, a, there's a ton of action normally. This one does not have that type of action. This is a, this is more of a mystery. This is a mystery novel. You're there to find out secrets about the world and you're there for the further discovery, the character journey of what the character's going to find out. 
Yeah. That's what you're here for. You. So don't expect your red sister epic fighting nuns moment. Just forewarning. You wouldn't say go rush out to read this right now. What would you no, I, what would your rating be for the book? My Rambler rating would be accepted. If on the the list of things of the highest being a must read right now, then below that recommended, then it'd be a accepted, mixed, then rejected. I'd say this is accepted. Like it's definitely if you already have this on your TBR, go ahead and read it. I think it's good. I so I lean more into the mixed territory for this mm-hmm. book. I and the reason I say that the one summary I could say for this book is I think this will way, work way better as a novella than a full book. Mm. I so some of the messages here hit and it was interesting to think about, but I think it dragged on a bit. Okay. And I wasn't as attached to the characters. It was interesting enough. I don't hate the book. And I'm not fawning over the book. I think we'll have a cool discussion on some of the messages and themes more so than just the characters and plot. I don't think anybody out there, you're going to fall in love with these characters. I think it's fair to say that because we had this as one of our patron book clubs of the month. This was book, the book that wouldn't burn was one of the ones we discussed with all the patrons. And for the most part, they were also mixed as well. And the ones that did like it, liked it like you did. They liked it enough. And so if we were going to recommend something, I'm sure we'll read other Mark Lawrence stuff Mm -hmm. that will very much recommend more than this. And I know that's not the best for, Hey, you're coming onto this video going, ah, Maybe I'll read this eventually. That will be with honest with our yeah. review, even though you do like the book more than me, probably. You, I think people would be here for the interesting discussion on the nature of knowledge versus wisdom and why like, that's kind of what this book gets into. Interesting on, stuff. Yeah. Is the whole the whole adage of is ignorance bliss? Is that actually true? It can. A lot of themes. This whole book kind of relates to a lot of the age that we live in, the age of the internet, confirmation bias, uh, people, do you pursue truth or do you pursue just to confirm your own biases? A bunch of interesting stuff to talk about. Yeah, so if that's up your alley and you want to think a little bit more and get a cozy feeling, I'm sure this book won't disappoint you in yeah. that way. You're not going to get any super exciting moments, but it is a book with something to say. And Mark Lawrence is a, a great writer. He's written other great books too. He knows what he's mm-hmm. doing. Very confident. Yeah. This video is brought to you by Storyverse. Storyverse is a new app which combines original short stories with professional animation, all in a TikTok style feed. So if you're tired of kind of watching stupid people doing stupid crap on stupid platform of TikTok, actually spend your time reading short stories accompanied with really cool animation. They spend eight to 10 minutes and these are made by professional animators. You literally scroll it like you're on Tinder going left or right. You keep swiping away to the story you want to read and the animations are done actual professional animators who have done real books and real things and real stories. And it's also (laughs) really cool, interesting styles. If you're a big fan of webtoons and you want a little bit more actual writing and you want, a bit more of instead of just still panels, you want animation. This takes it to the next level. Go ahead and check out Storyverse it's on your app store, anywhere online. It's awesome. Thanks, Storyverse, for sponsoring us. So, do you want to get in a little bit for the five categories? You want to go right into it? I mean, what else do we have to discuss? Yeah, let's, let's go right into it. it. Okay, five categories or six categories. Six categories. categories. That's yeah. right. Now, what would you say for. Oh, spoiler warning, by the way. Yes, full spoilers. Spoilers right here, right now. We're going into the book that wouldn't burn. You ready? Yeah. Okay. So of the first two categories we got, emotional impact and thought-provokingness, what did you rate each of those categories? And we'll talk about each. Sure. I gave the thought-provokingness a four, so I thought it was great. Um, the emotional uh, the emotional impact, I gave it a 3.5. I thought it was good. Got what did it. you give it? I gave So I gave thought-provokingness. And to clarify for viewers here, th- that means we're talking about messages and themes, how much it sits with you. Does it have something to say? I gave that a 3.5. I thought it was good. And for the emotional impact, how invested I was in the story, I gave a 2.5. Okay. And so I said it was more disappointing. So emotionally, I was disappointed, but thought provokingness, I thought it was had good and had some stuff to say. And I don't, want to start with the messages and themes here. Yeah. Okay. It's, I think it's that's more interesting about, conversation. So I think there's a couple here. Which one do you want to tackle first? Because I, I overarching think, themes, there's the, the, I, so the two big ones is the one on, basically different peoples uh, being able to get past their differences. The, if you, the idea of communication and 
the bit the barrier of language understanding that you can actually come across people from a completely different culture and actually understand them and come to see you have more in common than you have uh, differences there's that and it's the romance aspect of this book yeah. and then there's the other one of knowledge versus wisdom of just because you have a lot of knowledge just because you know a lot of things doesn't mean you're particularly wise to use them that's how what i think about you thanks you know a lot of things I, I went the opposite route. I think I'm very wise for how little I know. <laughs> <laughs> you, you exaggerate everything that you know. Yeah, that's fair. It's oh, yeah, no. You can take I, it either way. <laughs> I sound a lot more intelligent than I am. I, mm. I know, like... You really stretch that word count. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I, I fake it a lot. And I get by. It's fine. <laughs> it's, well, something that we're both guilty of, most humans are guilty of, is that whole... The discussion of knowledge in this book mm -hmm. and confirmation bias. And you hinted that in the spoiler free where in this endless library of all knowledge ever, anything can exist. The king and the societies in here use it only to show things that they want to hear and want to spread. So it, they'll use it as a tool. If you can get anything, you could hear any opinion, you could hear any side, but you're just going to go find the book the article online, whatever it might be, and pull that out and use that to show, ah, see, I'm right. Or, ah, see, here's the thing that is true. It goes into my frustration with just how studies are used in regular conversation. It has bothered me. I've, we've talked about this about with Bookborn. I'm not entirely against studies in and of themselves and scientific research. I'm mostly against how people use them in conversation. And even if I have read a study... I just generally find it's pointless to bring in conversation because what do people do? They just go, they look up like, oh, what proof that, I don't know, proof that you're dumb and wrong. I'm smart. Proof that yeah. you're dumb, I'm smart. First article online, read the headline, uh, the, you know, the headline, it confirms my bias, throw it at the person's face. Like, see, I got a study that says I'm right. Pointless. It, it, it It's... It's kind of what we do. You viewing right now, viewer out there, pick a name. Who, who are we talking to directly? Steven. Steven. There's got to be plenty of those out there. Oh, yeah. No, Steven knows who I'm talking about. So, yeah, I, you may think I'm talking about a different Steven. No, no, no. It's you. It's you. It's you. So, Steven and other, other people out there, they're watching this video. Maybe they read this book or any of the books that we've ever read and reviewed. And they go on BookTube. They search up, oh, what do these YouTubers? I noticed, I didn't say favorite. Booktubers or YouTubers. We're not up there yet for some people. What, for some what, people. what do these two Kremlins think? Or what does anybody else think? They'll go to Bookborn for someone that actually is knowledgeable about stuff. They'll go to some other different conversations. Maybe they come here for different reasons. And they'll see, ah, I read that book. I love that book. Or I hated that book. I want to see these people I like gush about it or hate on it. Yeah. And a lot of people will just seek out reviews that agree with them. And confirm their own biases, of course. We do, when I finish a book, I like to see on, I'll go to Goodreads, I'll go to something of, man, who else? Am I crazy? Am I the only one that hates this? Am I the only one that loves this? And mm -hmm. then want to see other people that agree with you to help you go, okay, okay I'm not crazy. Or yeah. just to see, okay, you had that feeling. I want other people to also feel the way I feel. And especially, that's just book opinions. When it gets deeper into philosophical or entrenched beliefs and you yeah. believe it down to your core... You're, you're not going to be confronted with something that you dislike as much. Hey, we can be aware of that and try to try to be unbiased as we can, but it's human nature. So we can, we can try to objectively look and go, hmm, what is my actual opinion? Let me confront this with things that are op opposing to what I think and then change from there. But this whole book's exploring well, deeply held entrenched beliefs, something that is down to your core. You're going to be even more antagonistic to change. and. Yeah. As much as, again, we're talking about these two categories with emotional impact as far as the story goes and how invested I was, not so much. Thought provokingness had something good to say. And I, the reason I said earlier about this being a perfect novella is mm -hmm. it has a good message. And I think a novella would have been perfect to get a message like this across in a more impactful way for me, too. And I would have thought about it more, kind of like your Piranesi's, where if Piranesi was a longer book, wouldn't have stuck with me as much. If sure. Piranesi had more than that, I was like, no, you could have gotten that shorter. This is a, a really great message, but then I think the length of time it gets to say that 
was my complaint about the emotional side, but it does have something good to say and makes you think. On your side, you both thought it was, you know, you were pretty invested and thought-provoking. Could you touch into... Sure. We, we agree on the message here. I, I, yeah, I disagree on the length of the book. I don't think there was a much to cut, so I wouldn't want it less. I don't think it would be a good novella. I like the length of the novel. Yeah. However, I will say it, what soured a little bit of my enjoyment was the end of this feeling like it's a setup book completely. And that's... That soured a bit of it for you? Yeah. A little bit of it wasn't its own complete thing. And it, you're right, it could have been. It very well could have been a just standalone novel very easily. And then it kind of felt like the last two, three chapters. Okay, this is a series. Yeah. So it's a little... It, it's, it's also little very odd. strange. This is going to be a trilogy, the library trilogy. Very much feel like this is... I, I know he wants to maybe explore these characters more, get more into it. He probably has more world-building aspects to show us and a plot line mm -hmm. to go through. Of course, he planned this. But it really is something that I wish was a standalone that I could think about and let that message stick with me. That would have been much yeah. cooler than going, oh, it, it's... Now I'm thinking action fantasy going on with these characters where and that's again i was less interested in the characters yeah uh, do, do you want to jump i don't want to jump in because i didn't give you too much time to talk about <laughs> what like why you like it more than that or something about the message that rung more true to you other than the confirmation bias is there something else layered there sure i mean it's it's not just the confirmation bias and of course all of this we're talking about to give context the library in this in this book in this world is an infinite library has every book that ever has been written or ever will be written mm -hmm. is in this library. Now, can people find the book that you're looking for? No, it's not easily accessible. So it takes a lot of time to actually go out and index things and try and find the books. But that's kind of a part of the internet as well. Like, yeah, yeah. all infinite knowledge, but like, which one's true? We kind of have like, large swaths of information that it's hard to actually index. Like and we have a little bit Google easier. helps us a little bit. Helps us a little bit, but and then ultimately... The, in this world, it's the... What are they called? The assistants. The assistants. Are your Google. Yeah, they, they got it, but they're, it's not the same. Like, no, sure, no, we all. have it easier with Google, and in all honesty, a little bit more condemnation on us yeah. that we have the entire... The entire... All of Earth's history and all of Earth's knowledge yeah. at our fingertips. And what what is Steve doing right now? He's watching a book. He's oh. watching a podcast on a fantasy novel. Instead of learning about the great literature of Earth, <laughs> instead of learning about Marcus Aurelius, instead of learning about Napoleon Bonaparte, Madame Curie, any historical figure of importance... Nah, let's talk about fantasy world books with two lame-o YouTubers. That is kind of the essence of, wow, we are wasting what we have. <laughs> the internet is the biggest gift, and we crap on it all the time. Well, see, I I like books, though. I know, but that's... <laughs> All of Earth's knowledge. Oh, wait, wait, Rich, I'm going to disagree with and you. We on, come I'm, I'm going to disagree on one thing, though. There's like 90% of the internet, other than this book tube thing we're doing, is there's 90% of the things out there are worse than viewing this on YouTube. I think, for uh, the most yes, part, everybody yes, viewing right. this, you're on the top 10% of the internet right now, as far but as... don't feel happy about that. No, no, no. 90% is awful. 10% is not great. We're still upper well, echelon, okay? Of the things they could be doing on the internet... On the internet? On, think about it. The yeah. internet's a big pla scary place. It's a big scary place. Oh, boy. <laughs> so at least they're here cozying up a little library. Also, I was falling into the trap of one of the, the libraries in the book. Are they in this world, in the culture, where they, yeah. they actually look down on heavily yeah. fiction books. Yeah. Because they have like this world of knowledge and they're constantly trying to develop their technology. It's like yep. going, why the hell would I waste a single second of my time reading fiction? fiction? Right. And Mark Lawrence has a point to say in this book, one of the messages is that fiction's important. Yeah. And he is essentially saying that you can sometimes find more truth in fiction than nonfiction, mm -hmm. which 
of course, us fiction readers. Again, when I'm saying me, he meta this, Mark, I so agree. Like I'm like, yes, fiction is it. <laughs> he's, oh my goodness, he's writing this to people who will get confirmation bias out of his own book. 100%. Because he's, he's giving this to readers who are already going to agree and be confirmed in their biases that fiction's great. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> nice job, Mark. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's great. It is. That is great. I, what do you think about the romance aspect of it? And this will bleed into characters, but I think overall the idea yeah. of, I think it's a message we've seen before of peoples from different cultures and drastically different backgrounds find that they actually have more in common than, uh, than they have differences. Yeah. And so what did you think of that aspect and how that message was told in this story? Uh, I want I will say I was more neutral on that, but I want to back up with one thing and say that made me think that whole plot point about enemies enemies realizing they have more in common than against each other mm -hmm. that this book could never be adapted ever because the whole reveal Oh yeah. The reveal is the fact that you don't know exactly what they look like so that the reveal yeah. could be hey they're actually the enemies. They're from from Levere's point of view, you know the sappers are Avar, I think is his name. Avar. Yeah. But the sappers are the enemy. Yep. And then you look and you know they're Leveria not. Leveria also says sappers are the enemy. Exactly. Turns and out so you think they're both humans <laughs> and yeah. actually what a twist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, Ivar is actually one of Laveria's sapper. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got there it. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm figuring it out. <laughs> yeah, the the thought-provoking part of this book with the confirmation bias and the library, all that, great. The romance stuff and the enemies, I think it was uh, it was fine. I didn't, it didn't enthrall me, and I think a lot of that will go into character talk, but you're, you brought it up. Did you think that the romance and that message was anything that super connected with you? Well, this kind of goes into my character rating. I gave it a 2.5. Ultimately, just kind of disappointing. Okay, 2.5 um, stars out of 5. Yeah. And I, I gave it, just to put mine up there, also 2.5 stars. So we exactly agree that it was more on the disappointing side. I don't think that they're particularly flawed. It's not that they're bad, particularly. It's just wanted a bit more out of Ivar. Um, the various, like, it's just not enough Would you agree not that enough for me. Ivar's more, and not as just a derogatory, I don't mean it's just negative, it's just a fact that he's more one note, and yeah. Laveria is his purpose. And hey, there could be one note characters, it's just maybe that one note character didn't get you as much as other one note characters. Yeah, I can understand on a certain level that because he, uh, Ivar was isolated and due to his trauma basically his whole life is surround surrounded by filling the hole in his soul that is Laveria. yeah uh, so he kind of has to be one though yeah <laughs> yeah I, I get it yeah but definitely not as i'm not as interested in the characters as i am in the plot mystery aspect of it gotcha that's what carried me through it's not necessarily what the characters were going through okay so what did yeah. you think about Laveria's character i was very early on in the beginning, I really liked her. I I liked the spunk, her just saying, like, you know, jumping right into the monster's mouth to save uh, the soldier. Just that little angry, spiteful devil. It's cute. I, I, enjoy, I enjoy that type of character. You know who she reminded what? me of a little bit? Hmm. Uh, Lilo. From Lilo and Stitch. A little bit yeah, of that spunk at bit, the start. Like, that you remember the first scene of Lilo and Stitch where she just beats up the little girl? She's like, ah! Just... <laughs> Whack, whack. Oh, anybody that's seen Lilo and Stitch, it's just a great opening scene to Lilo's character. It's so One of fun. the best scenes of just like this <laughs> blank stare. And then just wails <laughs> on her. <laughs> like that's that's our spirit animal, I, our I spirit person right there. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Uh, but yeah, you're right. It does yeah. kind of remind me of Lilo. But I like her a lot in the beginning. And as time went on, I liked her, but I didn't see... For the amount of time that we had with her, I thought I would be more connected to her story and her change over time. Like, it seemed like she was supposed to be learning the lesson of, like, ultimately she was chosen by that head librarian because she was able to speak the Sabbath's language. So he thought, oh, maybe she will be able to overcome her hate. Turns out, for most of it, she isn't. She still hates the Sabbath's. But then by the end, she does overcome it. So 
over all I get them the story that she's going through I just wasn't as connected to it so yeah there's ultimately kind of disappointing to me it was a very much not super inconsistent but I guess didn't see the full picture mm-hmm. and maybe you'd agree with me on Laveria's character at first of course the and she's a duster she's in the dust and the sabers <clears throat> come and attack her family and her her society there but at first she has has a reaction of more curiosity of learns the sabers language and I don't see the extreme hate early on. And yeah, go ahead. Very early on in the beginning, she doesn't learn the Savers language. She learn she just remembers the one phrase. And she, oh, has this she, desire to learn it? Is that be, more accurate? Mainly because she wants to kill them. <laughs> she she's angry at them. It's like I want to learn everything I can about them to bring them down. Gotcha. I think that's how it started, I, and the I, librarian thought something else. Yeah, I read a little differently where the, I, I didn't see that much hate from her. Maybe... No, there's not. That, I guess yeah. what, what I'm trying to read into Laveria's character is this thing happened to her, but the one the thought that comes into my mind about Laveria isn't hate. It's curiosity. And I think if she was a little bit more... If, if that hate was more apparent, and she made decisions that were just... And then to the end, that's how she... Because her point is overcoming that with the enemy mm-hmm. and she didn't strike me as the most hateful person maybe that's the maybe see mark uh mark would respond to you like hey with era you you're saying he's one note with laveria she has multiple things going on she isn't just hateful she isn't one note yeah. she is mostly curious but she has this ball of hate from her from her port, uh, past trauma and all these other little things that go around with her she isn't a one note character little ball of hate what would you say to that? Oh, I'll say Austin. Just, well, you know what? Answer. Answer Mark Lawrence. <laughs> Mark, Mark, listen, first off, please still come on. That's <laughs> well, when I when I mentioned Ivar saying one note, again, I, I said that wasn't negative connotation or derogatory. It's like looking at the character for what they are and what they're going for. And for Ivar's, that's his thing. For that purpose. There's other characters that also have one purpose. And it works because it fits perfectly with the plot, or there's other reasons that make it impactful. With Laveria. Being one or two note, it's not again. I don't use that as a negative thing. I'm just trying to look at more of the consistency of the character and mm-hmm. see if this is some, this is someone that makes sense for the message being said. This is somebody that I'm getting connected to, and for the time we spent with Laveria, that hate kind of being a I didn't see her as super hateful when the point is to overcome that. Yes, mm-hmm. it's yes, it's there, but not as apparent enough to go like, oh, it makes sense that she has to be the one to tell this story. I kind of went in my head, eh, there's there's other characters that could have told this story if that's the message and that's what could have been said. So it's, yeah, it has nothing it's, to do with that note. It's you agree u- with that? Ultimately yeah. seems sort of replaceable. I've seen these type of characters before. Yeah. And with that whole plot line, it's a little bit confusing on why her particular, like why yeah, her, it's right. Why her? It's that rage you of against the savage you don't fully see, and you think with her curious mind, why wouldn't she be more curious to look into this and question some of this stuff? Yeah, more. her character set up so curious that I would think, oh, her message of the story is would be different than that. Her learning so much, maybe it could be a message about she learns so much and gets her confirmation bias so bad, and really emphasizing the fact that you think you know so much. Yeah, but, it, and like it really leaning the, into that. Maybe a change that would kind of go along with the message that Mark's trying to go is showing her study and learn about the Sabers particularly mm-hmm. and studying and researching them, but basically confirming her own biases yeah. down that route. Yes, exactly she's very saying, curious, yeah. but she's she doing thinks, the wrong she research. She thinks she knows so much because she's becoming more knowledgeable, but the whole point is you think you're knowing more, but you're really not that wise. And then it's the revelation moment of, of way, oh, actually, yeah. most of my research was incredibly biased in what I was learning. I, I clearly know next to nothing about them. Yeah, when you thought you knew everything, because yeah. that, w- that would have been perfect for her character, but didn't really go that direction. She mm-hmm. didn't go super into it. So, uh, not a bad character, just... A little disappointing in that respect. Uh, I think some of the side characters, well, you have Ute, you have, you know who the best characters were? Hmm. The pets, the animals, the cows. Oh, the bird. I love the robot bird. (laughs) Robot library bird. Best boy. (laughs) Best boy. Best ball of darkness. (laughs) Uh, Do you want to get into many of the other characters or just talk about something that, something that was worth mentioning to you? Uh, For all the side characters, I think they were fine. There's not much else to say about them. Um, other than I 
kind of liked seeing the side characters grow up with Laveria through the large jumps in time. There was the moment of when Laveria goes from a a young girl to uh, a young adult, and you see just the moments of time with one of her friends of just like, she knows that he has a crush on her, and w- there's like two of them, and just, it wasn't that it was like, oh, what a great romance. It yeah, was yeah. just like, it was nice to see the interesting passage of time and how that interacted of like how Laveria has, has grown up and changed. And I thought this mostly goes to Mark Lawrence being a very good writer oh, yeah. that in the span, you know, one page to the next Laveria is now what, six, seven years older. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there's two time jumps, right? Yeah. Two, two time big jumps time jumps. jumps. And you really do feel how much, he does just enough that you really see how much she's aged and how much she's grown and all the little details that we did not get to experience and see with her. Sure. Yeah. I liked, I I liked the writing aspect. I didn't think it was like hammered in a lot of (laughs) worse writers would have had the time skip and like kind of info dumped onto you Yeah. where instead of giving an info dump on her life, it was more just her having an interesting introspective moment with a friend that she knows has a crush on her but doesn't reciprocate and kind of feels sad about that. And yeah. that's a great way to show her growth yeah, then to, you, a, to a young adult. What would you say about the side characters on of our side where he had his three siblings in quotes mm-hmm. and they each had a personality based on a book. Yeah. I, I thought it was, that was cool, right? It was cool. Especially, like, Hey, they're all one note characters, but it works for them. They're supposed because to be. yeah. with the magic system and just how, they're supposed to be that they've been warped by these books that they've been sucked into and spent 10 years or more of their lives in. So actually kind of, they were kind of fun. The, the message for me a little bit, you know, when you just finish a book that you love or watch mm-hmm. a movie that you love and that becomes your personality oh, kind of yeah. thought me of that when I'm so embarrassed to admit this on camera, forgive me, but you know, the, the karate kid. Yeah. The bad one. Uh, the one with Will Smith. Yeah. And Jackie Chan. I, I like that. <gasps> you did too? I did too. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I watched that. I was in my peak preteen teen mode when I watched that movie in theaters. However old I was. I was young enough to be impressionable. And I was to go like, that is literally me. And then I started doing karate moves. for. I joined Taekwondo for like 10 years. <laughs> I saw, that wasn't because of that movie. That's, that, I'm exaggerating. But yeah. I, would, I watched that film. And then for the next several days, my personality was I am literally a Kung Fu master. Like oh, come yeah. at me. And so these characters, their personalities are, you read this book and it's part of the magic system. It's kind of cool how that works. I, hey, I'm in the middle of Sun Eater. I'm on book three right now, nearly done. And I got to say... Don't I, spoil. I just, don't, 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 don't. don't, don't no, I'm just down. saying my personality You're has got... I've become more dramatic. I feel mm. like I need... I feel a great need to read the classics and the arts and start studying my poetry. Get so it. I... In a regular, normal conversation about lunch, I can pontificate on end oh. about oh. Uh, about the greats of, you know, uh, <laughs> of Shakespeare of Earth and, you know, of Diomedes. Of <laughs> <laughs> Diomedes is such a poetic name. It's a good name. Just di- oh, okay. Or He's- just good, like, someone asked me, like, hey, you mind passing the ketchup? He's like... I don't know. Can you? <laughs> Many things uh, ask me of that. Of you know, shake, uh, Socrates would ask it in a different way. I'm very disappointed in your not knowledge. Can, not about can you? Why would you in the why first would place? you in the first? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I it, feel more dramatic. I totally see that. Think things are starting to make sense. I was, I was going to say like yeah. I, because I had a feeling when I was walking out of the car even today after listening to the book. Oh, don't spoil it. Spoiler. Yeah, don't do that. But don't I do was. That to me. I was feeling hype. Okay. I was, I was there. Yeah. I was, I was feeling literally him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just hatred. <laughs> <laughs> the, this book does it. It leaves us with that feeling of ah, thoughtfulness and a bit of comfort. It doesn't. Uh, I, I didn't emotionally resonate with me a ton, but you finish this book and you kind of think, okay, neat. I had, I neat. Yeah, that's the word that comes in there's my a, head. There's enough to think about, and going into the next category for me of into plot, plots. Yes, would you give plot out of five stars? I gave it a three point five. I thought it was good, uh, especially okay. because I was caught 
uh, like some of the twists got me. I know they didn't get you. But do I, but let me just put my are. rating so we can. Yeah, go ahead. So mine is a two star out of five. So we, this is our biggest difference. Uh, I, yes. I, I think it's flawed. Mm-hmm. And I'll continue with what you're saying. Just we have reference. Sure. Okay. And because the plot twist yeah. got me, it like ultimately was like, that's a pretty well done plot for me. Okay. I was carried along through. I enjoyed the mystery aspect. I wanted to know more. And ultimately, by the end, I was pretty satisfied with it. So ultimately, I think it was a good plot that carried me all the way through. So Fair. why did it not work for you? Why did you think it was flawed, particularly? Uh, okay, so a couple fold. The first one being my my general complaint of the novella thing. It's just I think there was a lot more than what was actually being said. And hey, if I enjoyed the characters and want to spend time with them, that critique would go away completely. Because that I couldn't imagine me going to Stormlight being like, oh, this needs to be shorter. No, because I want to spend every living second with them. <laughs> so a part of me thinking it's bloated also has to do with me not caring so much about some of the arcs sure. so some of the bloat comes from character investment but me looking at this going hey this is the message of the novel i i would have appreciated it if it was a more succinct message and this is much longer than his book two will be i know book two is like 100 to 200 page shorter than this which i'm which makes me interested in going maybe i'll like that more maybe mm-hmm. i'm not going to jump out of my seat to read the second but to stick I, on i will yeah. actually be reading the second book Neat. so okay. I, I, hey, I'll if you really you, enjoy it, you know, then um, let me know. Like, is it a significant step up from yeah. book one? I'll let you know to read it. Awesome. Because that whole twist we're talking about with... Uh, that's, I don't think we're talking about the Savers twist, are we? Or was, Is that the twist you were referring to? Or that's we, one of them. That's one of them. Because the one thing that didn't surprise me a ton was when Laveria saw the Savers and humans, or saw both of them together in this other timeline... Let me make sure I have that right. Because when we get in the world building, we're going to have to explain not, ourselves. It's not another timeline. It was just, I think, the past. Was it the past or was it a different world? I forget if it was a different world because I know you could either jump or past. you could... Because past? Okay. if you go into the future, that's where you get stuck. Gotcha. They could both go into... Oh, no, no. I didn't know if it was a different world or their own past. You know what I mean? Was it their own past or was it a different uh, library? I believe past? it's their world. It their, their timeline. World. Okay. Yeah, Wh- whichever it was, they saw the Sabers. She saw the Sabers in them that they were all dead, and her first reaction to that was saying, "Oh my God, they killed us and themselves." That, that wasn't the exact quote. <laughs> Take that yeah. with a grain of salt, but something along the lines of, "They're horrible." And for Liveria being this curious person, and for supposed to just that thought, and again, that maybe that hatred is part of what came into this, but her curiosity and me as the reader going wait they're all dead next to each other wouldn't one explanation be that you know they lived in harmony or is there is there a world where that happened just that that was a seated thing of what i was thinking but laveria mm. wasn't thinking so i was thinking plot wise going like oh i think this is an explanation but laveria who's just laveria is supposed to be smarter than me is one of the things when a character is supposed to be written as curious and knowledgeable and smart and didn't have that thought took me out of the plot a bit and went, oh, that that didn't make as much sense. Now, that would be very different for a different character who is supposed to be a not as intelligent as you or not as not supposed to surprise you. Or suppo- I guess she was written that way where I expected her to think that through, and also that plot point didn't surprise me. So as far as my disappointment for how, why I thought the plot was a bit flawed was, one, I thought cutting down to more novella length, two, that, that surprise or... What Laviri was thinking, and three, I think the ending that you mentioned earlier, with it not concluding but kind of leading off to a sequel and not having that compact, and as well as that final actiony library burning down. For some reason, the whole library burning and the intense fast fights thing at the end didn't really match with the rest of what I was promised in the book. Mm. as much I was kind of expecting more of a thought provoking and also we're getting immersed in this interesting world and then when it it, it kind of reminded me a little bit of the movie Glass Onion and there's a lot of reasons mm. I didn't love Glass Onion yeah. Glass Onion is actually bad but looking yeah. at Glass Onion the end there not spoiling it's very very light on that it's a it's a movie about it's a mystery it's a murder mystery just like the knives out was a murder mystery then glass onions a murder mystery then turns into like a cgi fest and i'm just going that's i just wanted a murder mystery <laughs> so i guess what I, I didn't feel like i was given the payoff i was promised a bit with a book like this so that's my critiques of it but again 
Oh God, I said this. If Mark never watched, now he's never coming on. Now what do we do? <laughs> okay, save this and say why you liked it so that he can tolerate us and so, come on one day. To the scene of the sabers and the humans being found at the same time. Yeah. And like all dead around each other. That I didn't think that they were working together. They were living together. I think the way it was written to me, I just kind of thought that they were on how it was described. I thought like humans were on one level of the house. They went down further and found dead sabers on another level. And I was like, oh, I do just I, correct, I like, do think they were on the same floors, though. As it was written. I'm, that's what be. I remember. I just, the first thing that pictured in my head yeah. is they sent a bioweapon in, killed a bunch of people, and then they went in to double check and like, you know. Oh, geez. Yeah, okay. To raid it after the weapon's gone off. And basically it still killed them as well. And they thought they'd be fine. That's kind of where my brain first went to. Okay. And so I was like, so, so that's why the, that. twi- the yeah. twist got me. And so I, I'll be on, didn't, you know, Mark, you tricked me. You tricked me good. Um, other than that, so because plot points like that worked for me, I enjoyed the plot more than you. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, we were getting at the ending, I guess. You um, agree with me on that point. I agree with you on that point. It's maybe not as completely because I was down for it for most of part of it. But you see what I mean by the action end where it didn't seem like that. Action book. I guess a, I a felt bit, like I was promised but different. Maybe a little you'd bit like in the beginning. I mean, we're set up with Ivar and all the action with the uh, the escapes, and there is some action I think is promised in it. Yeah, there's some the fact stuff. that like yeah. all of Ivar's group is like very physically well trained. They're doing all these fighting, and then I, I feel like we are owed a little bit of battle and stuff like that. So okay. To that degree, I think we are owed. And also the looming tension of the battle coming forward of like, hey, look, mm-hmm. Bavaria's world and city is going to be ransacked and destroyed. Gotcha. We know that going forward. So I do think we were owed some action at, be- at the end. Sure. I just didn't, I really didn't like the ending line of like, let's go get your girl. Like, I know where she is. And it's like, was that the end? Eh. Let's see. It's, it felt oh, yeah. like... It says, you should come to Ivar, Carol called back. I know where to find your girl. Yeah, it, it felt like the... Spider-Verse 2? Spider-Verse right. 2, or just like... Which is, you know, same bat time, same bat channel. <laughs> just like, you <laughs> know... The, next week on the, the Ramble. The story just like abruptly cut so you will read the next one. So I yeah. don't enjoy that part as well. That's fair. And your point about there being action hinted at the beginning, totally fair as well. I think maybe I'm looking into it as I've seen way better things have promised and pay off to action in a ton of books. And this is not the kind of book where I was looking for a thrilling action at the end. Yeah, uh, it, it did not set it up in a way for me that went, that's what I'm looking for. Now, but, hey, in our ending, to give to give the story credit, this will yeah. kind of go into our world building. Okay, yeah. Give but credit. it's important to... Yeah, like this is the whole story is talked about the mystery. Yeah. And we're going into the mystery of the library. Now, in the action scene of the end, I think we get a ton of information on what the library is yeah. and how it actually functions. We get to know way more about the assistance. Let's talk world. We, let's talk world. Let's do it then. What did you give so, world building out of five stars? I gave it a four, four out of five stars. I thought it was great. That was great. Great awesome. world building. I gave 3.5 out of 5. I thought it was good world building. Mm-hmm. So we're close on that. That that 3.5 good, 4 meaning great. All right. Yeah, I, I thought it definitely immersed me into this world. I loved the aspects of the library. All the little details were really fun. I just loved all the assistance, how the library is a compromise between wisdom and knowledge and these two gods. And It's, it's biblical. Great. It's biblical. You go into, I love the callback or the, Again, there's a lot of references in this book. Oh, we should have mentioned that in the plot, actually, but it's Probably important should. here to a lot of the quotes and the epigraphs in the beat, which we could talk in prose, actually, but something that you're you're getting at, and I call you off, is the whole point that there's a lot of references to actual things in the world where if you get it and you have the knowledge of it, you'll be like, oh, that's a cool, yeah. that's a cool reference, Mark. To, to give some, I think one of the easier ones to pick up on is the pools and portals in the um in the exchange in this book but it's effectively kind of purgatory type deal it's a very clear reference to the magician's nephew the prequel to the lion the witch and the wardrobe 
I love that book. That's one of the earliest fantasy books I remember reading by myself. Really? I love that book. Awesome. And so I really quickly picked up on that. Yeah. And I like that a lot. Yeah. There's a, I know there's a ton I missed of references. There's tons of references. Just some of them. So from our Patreon, we, when we were discussing this book in our Patreon, <laughs> go check out our Patreon. Give us money. <laughs> and so there's a couple references where Merton Shire noticed a Guns N' Roses quote in one of the epigraphs. And Kendall noticed uh, there was an epigraph by R.I. Perrin. You know who that is? You're not supposed to because it's just initials for R.I.P. Like, yeah. Oh yes, she so did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, but yeah. you get what I mean when it's just it could go over your head easily. Went over my head, and yeah. I didn't even notice it. And then all these, all of our patrons are pointing out. Oh, what about this reference? I'm going. I'm just dumb. I, I don't. <laughs> that's that's cool. Oh. There was there was one with. Can I mention the one with Bookborn? And mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So Bookborn's husband, uh, Zachary Ga- Ar- Zach Argyle, Zach Argyle. Yes. Uh, he's an author, and there's and Mark Lawrence once reached out to Zach Argyle saying, "You know, your name sounds v- very fantasy. Ask if we just adjusted it a little bit." And so he had one of the epigraphs was written by Zachary Guile. Just put the Argyle portion mm. as so put Zach and then added the AR to his first name and made it sound more <laughs> fantasy. Ask as a little aside and note as a compliment. Yeah. So he put all these little nooks and crannies into it which really has more to do with pros and world sorry to off track us get, get us back ground us in this world okay sure yeah. <laughs> well i did want to say that this goes a little bit i just want to get on this point of do i listened to a lot of this book okay and i liked the audiobook however you will miss a lot of the references if you listen to it and okay. you don't physically read it it's something i've also noticed with sun eater recently i'm doing alternate of both I've mostly listened to it, and the, and this is, they make a reference to the word demon. They say it in the audiobook, demon. In the book, it's actually written as daemon. That is a computer reference. I actually know that, but like looking at it, but Uh. in audiobook, I, of course, I don't know. It's demon. Okay, sure. Yeah. I don't get it. And there's, and that happens so much. I'm like... (laughs) Man, do I have to actually just physically read yeah. it? Because there's so uh, actually physically reading it, I'm getting all the references and the audiobooks. All the references go past go me. over your head. Yeah, I think it's the same thing in this in this book. That's is the point. I probably would have caught the like the R.I.P. reference. I I physically read it and I didn't catch it. So you, well, yeah. I would have had a better chance, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> better odds than me. Better right? odds <laughs> if I could actually read it physically yeah, with yeah, my yeah. eyes. So that's just a side thing. But as for the immersion of the world building, I love I love myself a good like cyclical, depressing oh, story. You love your cyclical. Stuff. I love my cyclical. Neuromancer, words. Wheel of Time. Yep. What else is cyclical? Um, a- your love ways, life. Uh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Revolving door of sadness. <laughs> uh, a fire upon the deep for me. Um, Oh, you know, I didn't get that cyclical as much, but I see what you mean. I could say others, but you haven't read them, and they would be that would be oh, spoilers. don't spoil it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. I will hold off on the fire upon the deep. I just, have others. Just what I have. Aside. I'm chained to this guy. Oh, I can't okay. say things. <laughs> fire upon the deep is such like perfect world building. It's a it's a five star world building. If anybody was wondering. Yeah, it is. You'd agree. It, come on. Oh, come yeah, on. It is banging. Now, would I recommend that book to everyone? No. no. But would you recommend it to the sci fi nerds? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would you recommend it to Mark Lawrence? <laughs> oh, of course. Mark he, Lawrence was already He read would it. eat that. Up. Yeah, he's already read that book. I guarantee Him and Werner Vinge are pen pals. <laughs> oh, yeah. 100%. <laughs> But uh, like with Mark Lawrence, he what I've always been impressed with his works is his world, his world building has always just felt more real than others to me. I think it's with his scientific background when he does a fancy element, it's based in some measure of plausibility that it makes sense. I like how the, the exchange works of the the time traveling aspect of it to me felt far more believable and real of just the hard rules and sets of it love you can move forward in time on your timeline but then you're stuck in that Mm -hmm. time if you go back you're as a ghost and you can't interact with things but the exchange itself is time neutral where things kind of are more manipulated 
and mm. that's that's the one place where people from out of times can actually meet. Right. Why it's not really allowed for humans. Love that all the different parallel timelines, and you can hop into those. Super cool. Love it. The nature of how the exchange works of some the whole library has sections for humans and all these different creatures and it's allowed access to certain things oh my god just the nature of the library itself is so well thought out that there's so many details of it's the big reason why i'm going to read the book too is i want to know more about how this library began how it will continue why it exists should it exist yeah love it so the, yeah the world and the message is what got you with this book mm -hmm. and that hey that's all great and the library was obviously the focal point of this and you also get those snippets about the dusters and what and a little bit of we don't get a lot about the society you know that society is looking for confirmation bias we meet the king at one point but that's not the point of this year i mean the you're supposed to feel a point. little bit of it's very small Laveria's time and her society ultimately on the grand time scale is just one moment yeah and it's happened before it'll happen again it's ultimately not important and you're kind of supposed it's to the, make it's them all feel about small. the library yeah so i get you're supposed to make them feel small and significant yeah this gave me world building aspects that was reminiscent of piranesi though i love piranesi's world building significantly more so if i was kind of looking at this the library is great uh, it's that's a great part of the world building here. Agree with the in, how interesting it was. For some reason, being in the library wasn't as cool and fascinating as the setting. Where I could just I just imagined endless halls and libraries. Mm -hmm. Setting was cool. Concepts were great. Setting was cool. I'd say. Whereas the pure Nessie type, the concept was amazing. The setting was amazing. Like, everything floored me there. But you this were was, you were in a constant state of awe and wonder mm -hmm. with Piranesi's world mm -hmm. where in this one once sufficiently in the library you kind of felt like you got an understanding going on and mm -hmm. it's not as wow and surprising it yeah, becomes exactly. part of it also the amount of time we spent in Piranesi as a novella versus this as a book again going back to my main point of this of if it was a short time and I desired more time in the library. Mm -hmm. To me, you, you left wanting to learn more. I agree with you on learning more of the concepts, but I don't want to spend more time in the library, if that makes sense. Like, I feel like, okay, we're just going to go through more library stuff. Whereas the concepts, we'll learn more concepts. That'll be cool. Mm -hmm. So I guess that setting immersion was just, all right, we're here. Mm -hmm. Cool. And the, I, the cool stuff was going through Avar and Laveria meeting, not as much as I, I didn't love their characters, but how time worked and how there was that hard rule and it made sense. It's very hard for a time travel concept yeah. to, it, it can a lot of times break itself. So when you see it done competently, it's always satisfying. Sure. I mean, and I expect that out of Mark Lawrence. He, he, we, we expect that out of you. You keep, you keep that up, Mark. I, I have high expectations of Mark Lawrence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he pulls through on the world building stuff for me. Absolutely. Well, do you want to move on to the last category, prose? Yeah, let's get into it. What did you give it? I gave a 2.5 out of 5 stars, meaning it was more disappointing, which I will clarify. What do you think? I'm giving it the same score of a 2.5, disappointing. And I okay. think it's basically for the exact same reason. Yep. I, I think we, we've talked lightly about this. What, what would you say it is? There is some editing. like this. I think the book needs another, a, a different editor. Because there are... Can I give the quote? Go I, I have it from Mark Lawrence, where in his in his Patreon... Hey, go support Mark. He's a great writer. Uh, oh, yeah. He has his own Patreon you could check out. And it, he said this. Someone asked him in his Discord why there were a lot of clarifying and repeating paragraphs where something would happen in the plot to Laveria, then several paragraphs later would re-explain what happened. Or like something literally of our, next page type. And deal. then re-explain and clarify like, oh, this is what happened. This is what happened. And the reason mm -hmm. he did that is Mark said, in quotes, to be fair, it's super hard to judge. The book that wouldn't burn gets a lot of criticism for repetition. And that was all because the editor kept saying, I still don't understand this. Could you say it again, but more clearly? So his editor was telling him to repeat it because he didn't understand or she didn't understand it. Could you repeat it more clearly? So Mark was going, okay, my editor's saying this. I'll, I'll make it more clear. Whereas he didn't have this originally, but the edit actually made it worse. <laughs> yeah. It, it happened enough that mm -hmm. I just, 
ultimately I'm kind of disappointed, especially with how much I love Mark Lawrence's writing in yeah. general. For, I love Book of the Ancestor. I, he's definitely up there some of my favorite modern authors for prose just because he's able to put you into a setting. He's a, has great character voice on his other books. But hey, when so, when you're writing prose and we're writing prose, we're looking at something that's more irreplicable, as in the best prose ever, just unique author voice, incredible. And on the opposite side, your ones, your 0. 0.5, low, 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 it just distracts you and takes you out of it. And that this element was distracting. That an element was enough to distract you from the book where you went, oh my good, uh, what's happening here? Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, frequently enough that... It happened, it wasn't just a couple moments, it was throughout the book, uh, from even early on the beginning going like, why is he saying this again? Like, I, I get it, they're dusters. Like, I understand, <laughs> they're from the dust. He was just... Move on. Yeah, he was confirming our biases. Huh? Confir <laughs> confirmations. <laughs> but yeah, that, that carried on through the entire book, and so it was distracting to me. Yeah, but uh, well, let's also... As much as we're reading it on the lower end, still well written. And yeah. the epigraphs were really cool and had some neat lines. He quoted himself twice. <laughs> Isn't that a fun way of like you quote yourself in your own book and yet it doesn't come across as arrogant? arrogant. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was That's impressive. Cool. It was very impressive <laughs> because that could easily, if you did that in your future book, I'm immediately going, look at this. Dog. Well, his pompous his, ass. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he definitely just finished reading book three, and he's feeling very poetic, and he felt like he could quote himself. And yeah, <laughs> because the the epigraphs are very cool to read. He's very descriptive. Some people I I saw said this was some of his best prose yet. Some people were saying it was more distracting with the repetition. So it's which one affected you more? Uh, you've read his other books. Would you say this compares to his others? If take away the distracting part of the repetition, how was the prose itself outside of that? Outside of that, I still think Book of the Ancestors better. Okay. Mainly, I will get at character voice. I think the character voices in Book of the Ancestor were more distinct and clear. Of like, I didn't. Fair. I don't need them to say who said what. They're just super clear to me. This one, not as much. Yeah. So, yeah, th there's just something different that I didn't get from this book that I got from his other works. Yeah. Uh, do you want me to leave us off with a quote from this book? Leave us off with a quote. Let me do. Let me get you all nice and tidy here, okay? Mm -hmm. So, Book of the Ancestor. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do whatever the top one is on Goodreads. Do you know how oh, they have quotes? Not even working out of your favorite quote. No, no, just, no. Just leaving us because off with the Goodreads this, quote. This is, the this is what people say is the best quote of the book. Fair enough. A book is as dangerous as any journey you might take. The person who closes the back cover may not be the same one that opened the front one. Treat them with respect. Bye, everyone.